Good evening. Tonight we're going to be tying a fly that I had found in one of my father's old fly boxes from several decades ago. I did not find a recipe card, but it's unmistakably a Montana nip. The hook I have in a vise is from the Wholesale Fly Company here in Pennsylvania. It's a size 12, three extra long streamer hook. The thread I'm using is the Danville 140 denier. Go ahead and start your thread on, wrap it back, cut away your tag end, and then continue to wrap it back to the top of the bend of the hook, and bring the thread back to around the hook point and park it there. The hackle I'm going to use for the tail is from Sideline Hill Hackle Company and it's part of the streamer cape that I have but it also has some very nice feathers along the side that would make great tailing material and also make great hackle for a fly such as this. And select a feather with rather stiff barbarals. Take a pinch of the barbarals and tie it in. Give it one wrap up under the tail. That way it sticks it straight out. And wrap your thread back forward. Just a few wraps. And now we're going to tie in some black chenille for the back half of the body. I just picked up a fresh pack at International Anglers very close to me, up in Robinson Township, by the Pittsburgh Airport. I just got cleared by my surgeon to drive again after my triple bypass surgery. So of course, I was a little low on some supplies. And it was great seeing the guys at the shop. Tie in the chenille all the way back to the start of the tail and bring your thread back forward to about the midpoint of the hook. And trim off any excess so the fly doesn't look straggly. And now you can take the chenille and wrap it back forward to about the midpoint of the hook and tie it off. It's very important that you don't wrap the chenille too far forward. It's very easy to crowd the eye of the hook when you're trying to finish this fly up. Take the excess chenille, fold it backwards, creating a little loop on the back of the fly and tie everything in. And when you tie it in, make sure that both sections are parallel to each other and sitting right on top of the hook. And now you want to grab the piece of hackle that you selected earlier and that you used the bar rules for the tail. I like to cut the feather down to about just a couple inches because you're only going to need a few wraps and you want the shortest barbarals off of that feather. You don't want very long barbarals sticking out on this fly. And next we're going to tie in some of this old gold chenille. This uh, chenille is several decades old. Still works well, it's held up very nicely over the years. Just cut away a small piece and go ahead and tie it in right behind where you left the black chenille. And 
And once you have the gold chenille tied in, go ahead and wrap it forward to about one eye length behind the eye. You do not want to crowd the eye. And go ahead and tie it off with a few wraps and cut away the excess. And with your hackle pliers, palmer the hackle up through the gold chenille, giving it three or four wraps, tie it off, and cut away the tip. And when I palmered the hackle, I made sure the doll side was facing forward. That way the legs stick straight down and do not sweep back. And go ahead and trim the hackle on top of the fly to clean it up a little bit. Now grab the black chenille and pull it straight over top of the back of the yellow chenille and tie it off. Give it a few solid wraps before you cut it away. Be aware it's very easy to crowd the eye of the hook when you're making this last wrap. So just be conscious of that so it doesn't happen. Now you can stroke that hackle back out of the way. Make several more thread wraps to clean it up a little bit and make yourself a nice little black head. And when you have it all dressed up, take your whip finish tool, give it a few wraps and cut your thread away. Grab your head cement, in this case it's Sally Hansen's, and dab it to the thread. That way it stays nice and secure for you when you're fishing it. And there you have it, a Montana nymph. Very similar to the ones I found in my father's fly box. Like he said, he had five or six in there. And they all were decayed at, to some point. But they're very recognizable as a Montana nymph. If you like this fly pattern, and if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. I'll see you next time with uh, some more fly time.